The following is a recording of a live questions and answers session with Chris McCann that took place on Tuesday evening, July 18th, 2017, during the eBible Fellowship Conference. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a pre recorded eBible Fellowship's questions and answers time. This program is designed to interact with you with your questions and comments related to the Bible, and we'll try to respond as well as possible by going to the Bible. And so, with our Bibles at the ready, it's now time to turn things over to our speaker for this pre recorded questions and answers time and say hello to Chris McCann. Okay, we're, we're going to get started. Um, we'll begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. We thank you again for this time together. We thank you that we can stay focused on the Scripture, on the Word of God. And we, we do pray that you would use it as a blessing in our life and also anyone who's joining with us. And Father, we once again ask for wisdom and understanding and for your help in, um, in understanding the Bible, which is the most difficult book in the world, most complicated, and it's, it's way above us. We can never do it on our own, but we, we do ask for your Spirit's help as we uh, turn our attention now to the Word of God. And Father, we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, if anyone has a question here or listening on Pal Talk, you can uh, raise your hand if you're here, Tony, or on Pal Talk and just submit it into the text. Grace, could you go over, when we count the days from 1994, what, is, uh, what signal tells us, uh, I guess to confirm whether we use the actual date versus the calendar date? So. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that's a good question. Uh, and by the way, in the booklet, uh, there is a couple of appendix charts in the back, and one of them numbers the 40 days with 40 years. Like, for instance, it'll have day one, and across from it, 1994, day two, 1995, all the way through 2033. And the difference is, you know, because normally uh, most people aren't familiar with calendar years or, or counting inclusively compared to actual. And the way you can understand is whenever going from Old Testament to New Testament, there, um, there's two ways of figuring it. Uh, you can have actual years if you minus one. If you do not minus one, you have calendar years. But if you're going from, say, 1994 to 2033, there are two dates on the New Testament side. So calendar years are not involved. Uh, it, it's only when you go Old Testament, like 7 B.C., to New Testament, like 33 A.D. Well, both 1994 and 2033 are New Testament, so you don't deal with calendar years, but you can count inclusively as compared to actual years. And uh, an example um, we could use is this conference. We're here five days, Monday through Friday. Okay, when we got here on Monday... You could say that was day one. That was day one. Or until you get to Tuesday, say you got here at noon on Monday, and it's not until you get to Tuesday at noon, that's day one. Because that's 24 hours actually, isn't it? So there's, there's a different way of looking at it where Monday could be counted as day one, Tuesday day two through the week. Or you can say, no, it's not until I get Tuesday at noon 1, Wednesday at noon 2, Thursday at noon 3, Friday at noon 4. So one way of counting, you have a five-day period because you counted one each day, Monday through Friday. The other way, you have four. But it's looking at the same duration. There's no difference in the time duration. 
And that's how it is um, when, when we're, we're going 1994 to 2033, you're starting off counting the year, just like you would start off counting Monday as one. And, and so that gives you a different number than actual time. And, and actually, when we're thinking of days, like Jonah was looking at 40 days, he went into the city a day's journey. It, normally, we do count inclusively when we're speaking of days. And, and I think Monday was day one. That's the way my mind works. And Tuesday, where we're at, is day two. But, but there's the, if we want to be more accurate or definite, then we can wait until 24 hours pass. But thank you. Anyone else? Lester? Let's say, let's say I suppose somebody would tell me that 1998, 1994 is a pop yeah, you, you, you think that could be possible? 1988? 1994? And 1994? Yeah. What do you mean by apoc apocalyptic? Because somebody was telling me about it, you know, uh, apocalypse, you know, like it's... Um, uh -huh. uh, you mean telling you back then or telling you today? But, like, what's going to happen, you know? Well, these the, things the, the are in the past. You know, all that, you know. those, those years are in the past. But we're learning now actually about the past that God was beginning the judgment process, yes, in 88 and in 1994. And now it's sort of like he's giving the um, overall more general picture of the prolonged judgment period. Mm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, yes, Louisa. I brought up somebody else's question uh, last evening. Now, somebody's uh, question about uh, when Christ was slain and rose again from the foundation or when he entered the world, uh, how many persons are left in the Godhead? And then you went to explain and say, we can't ask it. So I think you meant that secret things belong to God. Mm -hmm. There are secret things yeah. that belong to God. And uh, that reminded me, you know, when I started because when I was not really a Bible believer, I always challenged the Godhead and said, how can a man became uh, a man became God? Although the school, the Christian school was teaching me God became a man, but I always turned it up, upside down. So, um, so when I became a Bible believer, I realized that the, this doctrine of Father, Son, Holy Spirit is not of man. Man cannot come up with this concept. And Christ would have to be the only rabbi from above to come and teach us this doctrine. Mm. And although it was already in the word, but um, Christ made it clearly that there's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, now my own question today is about uh, Janice and Jambro in, Ju uh, in Second Timothy, Chapter 3, verse 8, verse 8. Second Timothy 3, verse 8. Okay, Second Timothy 3, 8. Um, let, let me back up to verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Yes, because uh, you mentioned about Dathan and Abiram, that uh, they represent the, the, the church uh, and the judgment. Yeah, on, in numbers, yeah, so yes. that's why I thought Janus and Jambres uh, because when we looked up the uh, concordance, it didn't give us much information about. All it says is, is that these names are Egyptian. So I thought of the possibility of them having Egyptian names. Like Jewish people can have American names, yeah. English names, Chinese names, or well, I mean Chinese people mm -hmm. have English names. So, um, well, we're, and, and we're, it not, was, we're not helped. When we go to the Bible and mm -hmm. we find a name, sometimes it'll say of foreign origin, mm -hmm. if you ever notice in Strong's mm -hmm. Concordance. And, and so they don't know 
mm -hmm. the etymology or, or how the word developed. Mm -hmm. So, so and, are the Egyptian names? It, well, a, a foreign name, a lot of times you'll read it of, I don't know, Babylonian, Assyrian, any kind of name. Uh -huh. it, sometimes we know, uh -huh. but uh, there's, there's a number of times we don't know Mm -hmm. the meaning and and so the we meaning, can't yes. we can't come to any understanding based on the names oh i see so at that point we just look at uh there's a lot of information here now is janus and jam jambres withstood moses, moses yeah and moses a figure of the law of god the word of god so do these also resist the truth the yes. word of god well because of the fact that they brought out that so there are types and figures of um, those that are opposed to the truth of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. In the church, it has to be in the church two, though, right? In two church. could identify with caretakers of the Bible, uh -huh. and and yes, they would have that kind of uh, limited identification with the church because the church was the caretaker of the Bible. Because I heard people say, Brother Camping said they could be Egyptians, but Egyptians are not in the churches. Well, that's, that's what... Um, uh, normally is thought it, it goes back to the magicians when Moses went before Pharaoh mm -hmm. and the Egyptians um, performed the earlier tricks mm -hmm. the first couple of tricks of casting down the stick and turning into a serpent and mm -hmm. things like that that if you read theologians they normally think that that's, that's who right. these two that's men right. are yeah. that they were um, but don't you think like like uh, magicians before Pharaoh able to do certain trickery, mm -hmm. magical things that could give an appearance. You know, Moses' rod really turned into a serpent and devoured theirs. Mm -hmm. And when God turned the water to blood, he really turned the water to blood. But they could give, just like today, uh, the church gives an appearance of magic or of miraculous healings mm -hmm. and and falling over backwards and tongues and all these things. It's similar to a magician who can perform certain certain acts. And and so in that way too, they would represent an apostate church, uh, a church in so, rebellion against God. Se Second Timothy, uh, is it was it warning the church that it could happen again just like... Uh, I'm sorry, what? Was Paul warning the New Testament church in Second Timothy, that it happened uh, with Dathan and Abaran, who were also in church, Church of the Wilderness. Uh, from this verse, from, from this verse, or you're Timothy, referring to another verse. Second Timothy, chapter three, verse eight, because he was he warning the churches that oh, there that, could that's be rebellion. A different, that's a different matter with uh, Korah and Abram and, and those men in the wilderness, mm -hmm. it's, it's pointing to men in rebellion against God, but, but in the church, right? It, well, in Israel and, and then church of the wilderness? in turn representing the churches and congregations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have a question or a comment? Yes. Yeah, Chris, uh, the, that teaching that, uh, you was teaching at one time about um, God putting a mark on uh, Cain's head that nobody would kill him. Mm -hmm. uh, could you touch on a little on the understanding um, that Cain is a picture of the corporate church? Yeah. And yeah, uh, in uh, Genesis four. The, uh, the key verse is in f verse 3 in the King James. And, you know, uh, um, we're bringing up corrections. And later on in the study of Jonah, Lord willing, we'll bring up a major correction to Jonah 4 in the first verse. But overall, the King James translators did a great job. And I think that God permitted these kinds of translations in order to hide truth. It was just another way for the Lord to hide truth. So in the King James, it says, and in process of time it came to pass, and then we, we read of the account that leads to Cain slaying Abel. Well, literally in the Hebrew, it says in the end of days it came to pass. And 
that uh, it, it, it sort of is pointing to the end of time. And what happens at the end of time? The wheat and the tares have a struggle or the flesh and the spirit and um, the, the unsaved in the churches typified by the tares or the flesh rise up against the elect within the churches and drive them out. Right. And, killing, killing. And, and to be driven out of a congregation, like it says in the Gospel of John, they'll right. put you out of the synagogues and, and kill you, right. is likened to murder. And so here Cain kills literally his brother and at the end of time or in the end of days, professed Christian slays Christian, the, the carnal Christian slays or kills the elect child of God by driving them out of the churches and congregations. Okay, well prophesying again, is that uh, the same as uh, killing Cain? Prophesying again? As far as the doors being shut. Uh huh. No, no. When when uh, God is commanding us to feed the sheep, which requires prophesying or sharing the information from the Bible, there's no way around it, and you have to share it with everyone. So it it is a a second great commission, except this time uh, the first great commission was to find the lost sheep. And with the second great commission is to feed the sheep who are no longer lost, but have all been brought in to the kingdom of heaven. And there, there's, um, it, it's not in view with Cain slaying Abel. Uh, we're, we'll share information that pronounces judgment, that reveals judgment on the church and on the world, because that's part of the truth that God has opened up to us. But it, it's a different matter at this time. Oh, I see. Uh, one other question. Um, when you look about at the uh, patriarchs of the Bible, for instance, Solomon and uh, maybe the, the life of Samson, both um, disobeyed God, but yet one was saved and one was not yeah. saved. Uh -huh. And you look at uh, the incident of the thief on the cross. Right. God had saved him. Uh -huh. So um, is it a case where though he works, he may not work in a person's life where they're convicted or the person repents and realizes that God is uh, putting his finger on a certain sin in their life and they uh, realize that and repent? You mean why one becomes saved and the other doesn't? Yes. Is, is that what you're asking? Well, it's all according to the good pleasure of God. He chose, we're, we're told in Romans 9, before Jacob and Esau were born, Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. So God made choice between them before they had done either good or bad. And, and that's really, it, it even mentions uh, the election program there because God is explaining why he saved certain ones and did not save others. And he's basically telling us it has nothing to do with us. So the lifestyle that they live, it, you really, um, you can't really tell even though they disobey God, uh, you might disobey God or do things against God. Well, well you mean Samson who yes. was involved in, yes. in certain sins? Yes, the thief on the cross, he was a thief. And, Up until last yeah, moment. yeah, well, uh, and Solomon we know was um, multiplying multiplying wives, wives and, and he was unsaved. I I think it it's dangerous for us to look at maybe an individual like Samson, a rare occurrence really, because we we have a lot of examples of God's elect in the Bible like Joseph, right. like Daniel, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego faithful men, Abraham, um, and, and a, a lot of examples. And we do find uh, that occasionally there's, there's a man that is just, it, it's mysterious to us how he could be a child of God and be involved in some of the things he was involved with. But we have to 
recognized that God was setting him up as a type of Christ, Samson, and uh, like marrying the uh, Philistine woman. And, and it was all orchestrated by God. And, and God, of course, orchestrated simply by removing his hand of restraint, allowing Samson to do that. But uh, through it, teaching spiritual truth. And we shouldn't look at that as, um, you know, our example where David, who committed adultery and murder. murder right. And uh, we, we have to look at that as, yeah, God is telling us that a child of God can sin, that we, we can commit iniquity, we can do wrong even after salvation. But uh, overall, we have to look at everything the Bible says, and the Bible tells us there'll be an ongoing desire to do the will of God, and there'll be um, a developing and, and uh, a growing faithfulness in, in obedience to the things that the Bible says. And, and so if we're going the other way, or if, if we're struggling with an ongoing sin and we're not getting victory, well, Romans 6 tells us... Um, in, in that chapter, it says in Romans 6, in um, verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto God, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. So sin does not have dominion, and dominion is to rule, and uh, uh, sin rules in the sinner's life because it, it tells him, go get me this, go do that. And uh, right. yes, very submissively, the sinner obeys the lust of the sin and he, he commits that sin. And um, yet God says sin will not have dominion. So we could fall into a sin, but dominion would be continuing in it and, and uh, um, where that shouldn't be. No repentance. Well, no repentance or, or just struggling, struggling, struggling. Uh, you know, repenting, stopping for two weeks, a month, six weeks, right back. Again and again and again, right back. Uh, you know, it, it might just be sin allowing a little breather before I subjugate you again and command you to go get me that or go do that. I'll give you, you, you had a rough time. I'll give you a couple of weeks off. But with the child of God, sin does not have dominion. It does not rule. Christ rules. And, and that's the important difference. Okay, Chris. Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay, anyone else have a question? Yes. I'd like to ask about the captain of Jehovah's host in Joshua 5. I'm oh, sorry, what was that? The captain uh, of? The captain of Jehovah's host. In, in Joshua 5, 13 through 15. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay. But as captain of the host of Jehovah, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of Jehovah's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. We've understood that uh, the captain of Jehovah's Host is Jesus Christ himself, and, it's, and Joshua seems like a great type of the believers here in his obedience and reverence. My question is, when, when Joshua asks him, art thou for us or for our adversaries, why does he say nay? And then 
That's the first question. Why does he say no? Uh, Joshua went unto him and said, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of Jehovah, now I, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think he's, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's okay. a good question. I, I was also curious if you had any thoughts or why is it that he appears at this point? He appears right before Jericho's fall. As you talked about earlier. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I can't okay. help you with that either. All right. Because then I was just thinking also in Hebrews 11:30, where it says by faith um, Jericho fell. I forget the exact wording of it, mm -hmm. but just as faith being Christ there. And Jericho is, I mean, the captain of Jehovah's Host is appearing right before Jericho. And then Jericho falls by faith or by Christ. Mm -hmm. Just some thoughts on that. Yeah. Yeah. It's something to think about. Uh, I never considered it. Okay. So, thank you. Thanks. In Zechariah, the, uh, some of the Jewish leaders, the religious leaders, come to him and ask him if they should keep observing these four fasts that they had invented. Now, it the, doesn't, the, what? I'm sorry. the four fasts that yeah. they had invented, it doesn't tell you anywhere in the Bible what they specifically were. And uh, the answer from the Lord came back that you weren't fasting to me, it was hypocrisy and works. But um, like I say, it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible what what they were specifically fasting for. But uh, I, I looked in a couple different commentaries and um, Jameson Fawcett and Brown and Matthew Henry and Calvin agree, but you know how those guys are. The one guy will come up with a speculation and then the other three guys, the other two guys will will copy, uh, it. copy it. Yeah, but uh, did, did you ever look at that? They what, speculate. Where, where is this? It's in Zechariah 8. I'm sorry, Zechariah 7 in verse 3. They come to him and ask him uh, because here it is. It's like 19 years later and uh, their fasting hasn't done anything. They're still in a foreign land, and, and the uh, temple is still uh, in ruins. But in in chapter 8, he tells you what months they were. Now I can't find it. Uh, it was the 4th, 5th, 7th, and 4th, 5th, 9th. In uh, verse 5 of chapter 7? There you seven. are, a chapter, y y yeah. But in chapter 8, he... he lays them out. Uh, chapter 8, verse 19, the fourth month, the fifth month, the seventh, and, and the tenth. And, and those guys speculate, or I don't know whether, where, where else they, they might have gotten it, the, the fast of the, they were, they were uh, memorializing uh, different calamitous events in the, in the fall of Jerusalem. The fourth month was when they started the siege the fifth month, I think, was uh, when they broke through the wall. The seventh month was when they killed that guy that uh, the king of Babylon had made governor over them. And then, I don't, I don't have it right. I don't, did, have you ever looked at that? Do you think they have no. those right? No, yeah. no, I haven't looked at that. Yeah. Uh, but let me read it just so people know yeah. what you're talking about. In Zechariah 7... Um, Verse 4, or was it an earlier verse? Which one? 3. And to speak unto the priests which were in the house of Jehovah of hosts, and to the prophets, saying, Should I weep in the fifth month, separating myself as I have done these so many years? Then came the word of Jehovah of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land, and to the priests, saying, When ye fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those 70 years, did ye at all fast unto me, even to me? And when ye did eat, and when ye did drink, did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? And then in chapter 8, 19, yeah. Thus saith Jehovah of hosts, um, the fast of the fourth month and the fast of the fifth and the fast of the seventh and the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore love the truth and peace saith 
or thus saith Jehovah of hosts. Okay, excuse me. The, the tenth was first chronologically. The tenth was when the siege started. The fourth was when they broke through the wall. The fifth was when they came in and destroyed the temple. And then the seventh was when uh, Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, killed the other guy. I forget his name, Johanan or something like that. Well, uh, that, that's what the theologians say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's speculation on their yeah. part, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, there, it, there's nothing in the Bible that tells you what, okay. what they were specifically. Well, thanks, so, Guy. Thanks yeah. for bringing that up. That's something to, to look at. You know, if, uh, we have a lot to occupy us, don't we, we yes. <laughs> uh, with the Bible. This is probably, uh, you could probably put a few months into it. <laughs> Just looking up each word, praying for wisdom, uh, learning as much as you can, and maybe the Lord will open it up. But four, five, nine, and ten add up to twenty-six. Okay, you have a question, Bob? All right. All right. This will be our last question tonight. Um, we I, we talked about this before, but I need you to refresh my memory, and maybe others have this question. Since you brought up the uh, 390 days with Ezekiel and then the 40 days, um, why why would it be wrong, or, or you know state again why it's wrong to look at Moses's 390 years and and then the 40 years in the wilderness and compare it? Moses 390 years. Well, remember Moses after 390 years oh, oh. thought. It, you know, he was going to be the deliverer, and then, but God said, no, you have to wait. He had to go and wait 40 years. And yeah. so you got the 390 yeah, four, and the 40. 430 yeah. total. And you were, we talked about this before, so, and you were saying that it doesn't relate because of the starting point, maybe. Well, it's interesting that it may relate because after 430 years, there was the Exodus, there was deliverance. Right. And so if we take those numbers from Ezekiel 4, 390 and 40, it points to 430 days, and then you would expect deliverance. But in this case, it doesn't work out to right. 4,300 years because that would send us way off into the future. But a breakdown of 3940 is still using the numbers that added up to 430 days, right. but pointing to a date in which there can be an expected deliverance of the body in the resurrection and the rapture. So there, there may be with Moses, the timeline when he, uh, and, and there's another guy, you know, uh, a dirty rotten date setter. Yeah. Moses was looking at the timeline God gave to Abram of 400 years. And he would, had to be familiar with it because Acts 7 tells us that the time was drawing. The time of the promise was drawing nigh, and it was um, when Moses was forty years old, and, and which was three hundred and ninety years that Israel had been in Egypt. So the four hundredth year was approaching that he was looking to. He's also a date setter that got it wrong or incorrect at first, and then he, um, after killing the Egyptian and. Um, the Israelites not recognizing him as a deliverer, as a judge, and then he thought this thing is known and fled for another 40 years. And he fed sheep he for fed 40 sheep years. For 40 years, yeah. So at the final 40 years up until the deliverance, which would have been in 1447 B.C., 430 years. Yeah, he was feeding sheep the last yeah. 40 years leading up to the so date of deliverance. Could Moses's and the 390 plus 40 yeah. could that tie into 2033? Yeah, uh, with the the uh, timeline from Ezekiel 4. Yeah. 3900 years plus 40 years you're using the number 430 days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's coming out to a different number. It's not multiples of 10 of 430. Right. It's right. just coming out to a different number of 3940. Right. But it's still using 430. So, okay. so at the end of 3940, you come to 2033, which is using, again, the 430 days expected deliver. The thing is, though, after Moses fed sheep for 40 years, which totals 430 years, right? 
the three is 390 that is real. Then there was another 40 years. Then there was years. another 40 but years. But that, it, it, you know, one picture at a time. Yeah, God so. Can, can draw a picture of feeding sheep in the wilderness okay. for Moses 40 years yeah. in what you're talking about. Right. And then the other 40 years, isn't it interesting? God calls it a day of temptation in the wilderness or a day of testing. And what we're learning is that we've been tested for how long? Since when? Since May 21, 2011? Mm -hmm. 1994. No. You can go back before that with the end of the church age, the doctrine of hell, the doctrine of Christ being slain to the foundation of the world, the faith of Christ. Actually, the faith of Christ came out about 1995, right around that time. God has been testing, and God tests through doctrine. He tests through which way are you going to go? All right, I'm going to open up this scripture. How are you going to receive it? And we've seen that definitely with a lot of people that in their turning away from a doctrine uh, that God, the Lord, graciously opened up, they failed the test. Well, that's been going on since 1994. We can expect it to continue through perhaps a 40-year period that we could also call a day of temptation. Yeah. Judgment Day, a prolonged period of time as judgment began at the house of God. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And thank everyone for your patience. <laughs> uh, who's laying booby traps for Bob? <laughs> you have to put a paper uh, plastic bag on there, Bob. <laughs> All right. Why don't, we, why don't we close with a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, your word, for all your blessings, and and uh, it it due to our our limited ability, our limitations, we can see why something so complex and so intricate and 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 so um, carefully designed by you, such as this timetable for the end had to be delivered piece by piece. And we can see, of course, why those you deliver pieces to misunderstand, thinking they have the whole when they have a little piece. And then again, when they have a little bit more. It, it's our nature uh, to act rashly or, or to misunderstand things and, and not to see the whole picture. But Lord, we... We do thank you that you're giving more information, completing the puzzle, completing the overall picture so that we can see uh, what, what you have designed. And we're not surprised it's intricate and complex. All we have to do is look at the world around us and, and look at uh, under a microscope any living thing and we see incredible complexity, incredible design, and why should we think that you would make uh, your word simple or the timetable for the world and, and for the end of the world simple? No, it, we should expect it to, uh, to be put together and, and then see the brilliant mind that lays behind it. And Father, we pray that you would help us tonight to continue this is a blessing to us as we read your word think about your word help us to continue throughout this week and could it be when we leave and go home lord willing that uh will will be more likely to uh, pick up the bible to pray to spend some time with you than than maybe we have in the past and so we, we pray that you would bless each one here or anyone listening and help us uh, to get some rest tonight and to again tomorrow to um, joyfully to, uh, to spend some more time in the Bible. Father, we thank you and we thank you for the Bible and we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. And thank you for joining us again for eBible Fellowship's Questions and Answers Time with your speaker, Chris McCann. 
You can join us for these questions and answers sessions Sunday afternoons following the Sunday studies and certain weeknights following the Monday through Friday studies. Check ebiblefellowship.com for the current schedule. Until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.